Now, let me just uh, focus a little bit on the more on the experimental side. So the observables, which mainly people study using hydrodynamic simulations called uh, anisotropic flow coefficients. And we found that in later on, this is actually sensitive to the flow, uh, to, the, to the shear viscosities in the simulations. So if you look at, uh, if we look at a event display from the CMS collision, this is uh, from Gunther Roland. So if we look at the event display, you can clearly see that the energy distributions, which is indicated this tower, uh, blue and red tower in this event, event by event, you can see that they are not isotropic. So you see clearly a elliptical deformations of these energy and momentum depositions uh, along certain directions compared to the other directions. So this is, there's a clear an, an isotropic, uh, as the most anisotropies uh, measured in the experiment, event by event in these heavy ion collisions. So how can we quantify these uh, uh, anisotropic distributions? So one thing you can do is that in along these azimuthal directions, we can do a Fourier transform to basically translate into translate these oscillations in angle phi into a series of coefficients, which we call Vn, V1, V2, V3, and V4. And they basically describe a dipolar or some kind of elliptical, triangular, or quadratic deformations of these um, oscillations in phi as in terms of number of particles you measure in these uh, given momentums. So these VNs is actually called uh, anisotropic flow coefficients as in the measurements. So in actual measurements, we're not using actually doing the measurements event by event because uh, individual events usually have very large error bars in, in these uh, every five beams. So you actually cannot get a very accurate uh, VN uh, VN, VN decomposition from a single event. So in the, in the experiments, mostly the VN measurements is due through multi-particle correlations, in particular two-particle correlation functions. So you actually being a pair of particles in terms of its uh, difference angle phi, and also its uh, difference in the rapidities. Uh, so what you can do is actually to, to actually go through all the particle pairs in your measurements and build up a histogram, a two-dimensional histogram in terms of delta phi and delta eta uh, for these two party correlation functions. And then the VNs usually is actually calculated using the, using, uh, the correlation function at the large delta eta, which, which means that the two pair actually has a very different, has a large gap in, in terms of its rapidity. So that this actually suppresses the known flow inside the middle rapidity. As you can see that there's a near side jet peak which is actually coming from, not coming from the global flow coefficients, but from some other physics like resonance decay or charge conservation as well as the jet fragmentation. So we don't want to have this in terms in the measurements of VN. So, so usually in the experiments, you use um, the, the, the signals of these two party correlations at the large rapidity gap to, you, to, to, to perform a, a Fourier transform to extract these capital VN coefficients. And from some simple algebra, you can see, you can, you will understand that this uh, capital VN is nothing but just a square of the small VN. So we talked about a few slides ago. So you can basically take the square root of the capital VN delta to get the VN coefficients measured in experiments. So, so why do we want to measure these VN coefficients? They actually has a, a direct connections to tell us about the initial state fluctuation spectrums inside heavy ion collisions. And these actually can be an, have an, a good analogous analogy with the, with the cosmology, saying that if you have some initial state fluctuations and going through some model evolutions, you will imprint these fluctuations in your final measurements. So for example, in the cosmology case, is actually the measure the cosmic microwave background. And you, you can do a Fourier transformations uh, to actually get these uh, multiple moments. Uh, from from similar Fourier transform, so you get uh, so in the in the cosmology we can actually measure these uh, moments, uh, this L to up to two two thousand five hundred from the from the state of art calculation uh, measurements. In the heavy ion collisions, we have event by event fluctuations uh, from the initial state. Instead of do, going through inflations uh, models, we're going through hydrodynamics to convert these spatial fluctuations into momentum space. And these actually imprint into these VN coefficients that can be measured uh, in, the, in, the actual, in, the, in, in the experiments. So 
unlike we can go, we cannot go in the heavy ion collisions, we cannot go to that large number in the harmonics. We only go up to seven in n equals seven, and you can see that the the value of these coefficients from v two to v seven just monotonically decrease because of the larger dissipations in our system. So in heavy ion collisions, there's a large momentum dissipations which actually kills the high order harmonics. Uh, to be very small values. So the only measurables in heavy ions is only a few moments in the lowest order ends. But however, even using these few moments in the in the VNs, we can actually already understand a lot from about our the initial state fluctuations inside the heavy ion collisions. So so now we want